Yo, hey, what's up? Pastor Matt here. Hey, um, man, tornado warnings going on today, at least in our neck of the woods here in Florida. Don't know what the weather's like where you are, but I just finished this book, A Brief History of Thought, A Philosophical Guide to Living by Luke Ferry, and thought I would make a quick video update for you if you want to consider an introduction to philosophy. Lately, I've been reading uh, quite a bit of philosophy, perhaps more than I should, but that's because I find it so intellectually challenging. And every once in a while, it's good to read a book by a good old atheist just to uh, check your views against theirs, if only to understand what atheists believe and why they reject Christianity. Anyways, this book is very interesting. It comes in about five big chapters. First of all, he critiques uh, ancient Greek philosophy. And then he extends a rather generous and ample space to Christianity, which he considers and rejects. Uh, finally, he moves on to modern philosophy. He probably does way more with Nietzsche than I would have. I find Nietzsche really um, disturbing and uh, not helpful in most, uh, in most ways. Uh, Nietzsche, of course, is like the ultimate atheist, calls himself the anti-Christian. Uh, his worldview is extraordinarily dark and depressing. And uh, then, then Luke Ferry, the author, comes back and considers all of them and actually has some very winsome things to say about Christianity that makes me wonder if deep down inside he doesn't wish that he was a Christian. Uh, so anyway, here's the book. Um, one of the things that he gets wrong about Christianity is that he perceives it primarily as anti-intellectual. He says in one place that to, uh, to believe is to suspend the intellect, which of course is completely false. And anyone who's read any uh, Christian philosophy like Augustine or Anselm or others will, will uh, quickly realize that not only are our doctrinal convictions very deep um, and very profound, um, but also our philosophical underpinnings are as well. So I can't agree with him that Christianity is anti-intellectual, uh, and it made me wonder if he really understood Christianity in general. However, he does say some very nice things about Christianity. For instance, he talks about human rights as primarily being a Christian idea that did change the world. And one of the things that's really um, almost sad and uh, kind of provoking was very towards the end, let me see if I can find this, uh, this particular passage. He's discussing, here it is, um, the fact that we're all going to lose our loved ones. And he says either we can resign ourselves to that fact that uh, death is going to separate us and therefore we should try not to be attached to the people that we love. Or, as Christianity suggests, there is a resurrection from the dead. And so he says in the seminal paragraph at the end of the book, I find the Christian proposition infinitely more tempting, except for the fact that I do not believe it. Uh, I do not believe it. But if it were to be true, I would be certainly a taker. Um, it's too bad. I hope that uh, I hope that he rethinks his position on Christianity, uh, especially in as much as he thinks that faith requires a suspension of the intellect. It certainly does not. Anyway, it's a great book as an introduction to philosophy. Again, too much on Nietzsche for my comfort. Uh, way too many words spent on uh, on him. But it did help me to understand how dark a place it is uh, when you reject the great and living God and you ultimately come to the conclusion that the eternity and uh, the uh, resurrection of the dead is untenable. Anyways, I'll put a link to this book in the description of this video if you're interested in A Brief History of Philosophy by Luke Ferry. Uh, he is a professor of philosophy at the University of Paris. Very interesting read if you want to understand the mindset of non-believers. Hey, thanks for checking in. Love you lots. Talk to you soon. Don't forget links in the description. See you soon.